Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me on this continual journey, which has no end. So this is a box we haven't seen for a while. And those of you that are into Chinese pens or follow my channel will recognize this box for what it is. It's a box that a Chinese pen manufacturer has used for a while. You just pull out this inner piece and off comes the pen. As you can see, the box didn't survive shipping that well, but the pen survived fine. And this is a pen that many people have been interested in. Yes, it's made in China. And it's a Wing Sung 699. They're upscale vac, vac filler. Um, saw an Instagram post. Bobby said he was selling this on AliExpress. So I signed up. And the buy was um, pretty easy. And I received it in the usual two weeks. In the usual impressively wrapped package from Bobby with a lot of bubble wrap. So the cap comes off with about one turn which is nice and we'll see a wing sung nib. It is the two-tone variety where the uh, scroll work is in the silver rhodium plating and the gold plating is the rest of the pen. You know, your standard plastic feet on the back, nothing special there. So overall, when you first feel the pen, it has some decent weight to it. It feels nice. It has that precious resin feel of injection molded plastic. But in the package was also more. In the package was the standard rolled up instructions from Wing Sung. This has been in 618s in some of their other pens. But what's really to me impressive is they've updated the instructions to be specific for this pen. Here we have a list of the parts. I'll give you that translation, 1 through 10. Interesting things they call some of those bits. And then they have a very nice illustrated version of how to fill the pen. And also they're very clear in showing you exactly why you need to unscrew the blind cap to open up the feed to ink. And we'll look at that a little bit more closely on the pen. We'll give you a translation of these steps. Now Google Translate does a decent job and of course there's also the care instructions and in showing you that rinsing out the nib and feed is a good thing to do. Obviously unscrewing it would uh, <clears throat> need to be done in order to do that but then they show you all the bits and pieces up here. So kudos to Wing Sung for really giving you very detailed, uh, very accurate instructions written in Chinese, but the visuals I think are quite self-explanatory. Yes, I took the 699 apart. Why not? So one of the things I can demonstrate is this vac fill. As you push it down, it develops quite a vacuum and it pushes itself back up on its own. So that's a nice little feature. So I think that means that the tolerances are good, the lubrication is good. Um, so I give them kudos for that. Nothing out of the ordinary on the cap. Let's see if we can see which is the regular light, what's going on down there. Nope, we're going to need the LED. We'll bring that in in a minute. Yeah, you got a little logo there. And 
they have this engraving around the cap band and I'm not a fan of that laser etched engraving but it does identify the pen the Wingsung 699 made in China and the way the cap has those cutouts in it kind of makes it look like two pieces but it's not uh, this end of the cap is a little bit on the thin side hopefully that holds up over time the you know, injection molded parts sometimes have an issue because they might have some built-in stresses depending upon how they were molded that yeah, clip is fine nice and stiff we're going to look at the nib a little bit closer we're going to compare it to the 626 nib and here's your standard feed just a groove there on the back here's the section so there's no uh, nib assembly or anything but if you look at this section you'll notice right here is a little gate that's left over from injection molding that shouldn't really be there especially when the that <coughs> vac fill piston comes down to seal so I'm going to definitely take that off before I reassemble the pen you know and that ring comes off so we got to be careful about that um, part of taking a pen apart there's no keys in there so the nib will go in and that's fairly thick so I like the, the fact that the section has some robustness to it and here's the nib which is a little bit smaller than a number six you know it has nice engraving you know they tell you it's a fine it's definitely a wing sung nib let's see how it looks compared to the 626 nib well we need to take our nice LED light and look inside the cap and it looks like there's a nice cap liner in there no exposed metal bits which is good we we'll just do a little drive by and you'll see where that cap liner is in there and you know that's a uh, you know again not totally transparent but in this type of amber material you don't really notice it that much and of course you the finial here at the top I think is what you would get in the section if you didn't get the transparent section like I got in this here are the two nibs this one on the left is from the 699 and this is from the 626 they share some similarities one they're both two-tone but done two-tone in a different manner I'd say this is that more traditional one where the scroll work is in uh, rhodium plating here it's that end point kind of this was made to replicate like the Schaefer nibs of the time that the 626 emulated they're both fine nibs they're both uh, this is a wing s this is a wing s also and you have your logo there so the main difference is, is this is definitely a bigger nib but still not you know we're going to compare it to number sixes and see how that compares as we can see here compared to a generic number six Chinese nib it is still smaller We'll give you those measurements and the length which is the critical part that seems to determine the nib the shoulders are pretty good size and the end of the nib is also a, a, looks like it's standard but certainly is shorter let's see if when we write with it if it has the same writing experience that I enjoyed in the 626 which was a little bit bouncy and uh, a fairly wet nib here's that chart I put together which shows the length of the 699 nib in relationship to some other number six nibs and VBS nibs and you can see how that length is different so to me at the beginning of 2019 I don't need any fingers to count the number of Chinese pens that were vac fillers but all of a sudden now past the midpoint of 2019 I need to use both hands so here's your 699 which I would say is the recent addition to this line but just a little uh, bit before that was the 3013 here which comes in colors and I figured I wanted to use the clear one in this one and a little bit before that was the pen BBS 268 and then of course to me the one that started it was the 456 if you look at length and girth and size and whatever the 699 is a good size pen so is the 456 so is the 3013 uh, the 268 is a smaller one of this version but then they had to do something with the 268 
d to me design wise and manufacturing wise to meet a, a price point that was less than the four or five six and of course we need to just do a little close up on the four or five six because it's ambrosia which is just an amazing resin and I'm looking forward to getting some ink sloshing around in there so one of the things that I you know kind of focus on and look at is that you know the 699 may have been in development and engineering uh, for, for a while before it finally came out or maybe they wanted to time the release of the product for a certain event or pacing but you know I certainly would have come out with this pen before I come out with the 3013 just because you want to get that initial dollar flow with a new product uh, in the beginning and you might as well come out with your more expensive product before you come out with your less expensive product because in all honesty the 3013 for now you know well under five US dollars is a phenomenal buy a very good well-designed pen it just takes a pilot style nib so you're kind of limited to what you can swap in and out but there certainly are nibs available and the uh, pen bbs's have standard nibs in them so that makes it a lot easier to swap them in and out but let's take a look at the other pen that this might be compared to so the pilot 823 is the vac filling model but i don't have that so i brought out my 742 which I think shows a lot of the pilot design traits like the ball end of the clip. They share a finial design, but so do about a million other pens. You know, you got a cap with a cap band there, a little bit bigger here. And the cap is definitely longer. The blind cap here, we're here, this is a cartridge converter, so there, this is just a mock blind cap or a design element with a band in it that matches the band at the, at the cap. So let's take a look at the nib end. So here they are posted, and uh, 699 is a lot longer. you got to be pretty deliberate when you post it, but it does post securely. And they both have that gold band between the barrel and the section. And, you know, the nibs are where we're really going to get a difference. So let's zoom in. So right away, you'll probably notice why I have the 742, because it has a music nib. And this is their number 10 size nib. The 74 and, and the other smaller pens have a, a, a 5 size nib. And it's not necessarily related to the 5 that you would find from German nibs, but it's similar and the wing song definitely holds its own from a size viewpoint obviously one of the big differences between this pen which is about hundred and fifty dollars that I paid for it I do shop around on eBay I wait for things to show up and snag them when I can versus the twenty some dollars for this pen is here's a, a, a phenomenal music nib and here's just your standard fine nib, ubiquitous, that's in, you know, millions of pens. So they did try to do as much as they could to give you that sense of size and quality. But obviously for um, some people, and I'm glad I'm able to have both of these pens, but they both serve a completely different purpose. But here I'll, I'll use the... 742 for letter writing for uh, impressive writing where the 699 is just maybe an everyday carry um not going to get any real line variation or anything like from it but we haven't done the writing sample so let's not get ahead of ourselves so yes yeah, what ink to put in it yeah brown ink had to be an ink to put in it so we're going to put this ink in they always do a nice job of putting a label on their bottles and I do think these bottles are extremely practical they hold a decent amount of ink I'm very happy about them and it is kind of on the light side of the brown but I've used this in a few other pens and I've very much enjoyed it so we'll see how it works in the 699 so when I first saw this pen on Instagram you know I immediately 
jumped to AliExpress. I checked out eBay and Etsy. There were no listings, so I bought it on AliExpress. Since then, the pen has showed up um, in a lot of places. Uh, Bobby now has it on Etsy. Here's his posting. It's also available on eBay for a few dollars less. You know, it, it's not a significant difference, but I need to point out the fact that the pen is under $25 now from some sellers, and who knows what it may drop to. The other thing is uh, people talk about different nibs being available. Why aren't there gold nibs on Chinese pens? So yes, there's a version of this pen with a gold nib, but it's close to $100. US dollars. So it's roughly four times the price or an increase of $75 on a $25 pen. Here's a close-up of the nibs. Um, overall, I would say that I'm not willing to pay $75 for a Chinese gold nib. I mean, that's... I can pay $75 for Pilot 74. Of course, it'll be a smaller nib, but I know it's going to write well. And I also get a lot of choices on the type of nib I can get where you're not going to get that. It's just one gold nib. So enough said. Let's put the pen into action. And we talked about it being a quick unturn. And it really does feel good good size. You can see it It fits extremely well in the hand. Uh, you don't notice the weight. So if, if I didn't know this was a vac filler, I would not assume that based on the weight. So this is a light ink, but I'm impressed that it works fairly well in this nib. I doubt if I'll refill the pen with this ink, I'll go with a more saturated ink, but it does show off the shading and it does give a nice kind of vintage look to the writing, at least uh, to my eyes. So now we're coming to that part that some people look forward to. Some people have a lot of ideas on how we should do this, but this is what I have for now, so we're sticking with it. So for design, I'm going to give it three checks because I think the design is excellent. You know, a lot of thought went into how they were going to do a vac filler, and yes, they seem to have mimicked uh, another vac filler, but hey, I don't know any pen that doesn't mimic some other pen in some way. Engineering, we're going to give it two checks. You know, the parts all fit together well. They function properly. For build, we're only going to give it one check uh, because of that gate that should have been removed. There were no other gates and no other marks, but, you know, I did take the pen apart and I did notice it and it shouldn't have been there. For writing, we're going to do two checks because the nib is a fine nib, works well. And you can see it works good on this copy paper that I printed out this check mark. For the look, I'm going to give it three checks. It looks nice. It looks expensive. It looks, you know, and, and the look and the size are, are something that go together good. And for value, I'm going to give it two checks. Primarily, um, you know, $25, it gets into the range of, the, of some of the lower end four, five, sixes or within a couple dollars of them. And then there's the 268, which is even lower prices of VAC filler. And then you have the 3013, which just, from a value viewpoint, blows everything else out of the water. So people have asked me to retain my other rating system. So we're going to give this an 8.6. You know, I enjoy writing with it. The section feels good in the hand. You know, I think I would like a wetter nib and a broader nib, but that's not in the cards right now. I guess I could play around. A lot of people have been more adventurous than me in putting different nibs in these pens, but, you know, I think I should write at least with the nib that the pen came with because that's what the vast majority of people are going to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this view of another interesting pen from 
a well-known Chinese pen manufacturer. So thank you for watching. May you have many great, wonderful writing experiences. Explore this wonderful world of writing instruments that we have the ex good opportunity to be part of. So we we'll reached the end of this video, but there will be more to come. So we're going to say bye until the next video. And I can see where this ink can grow on you.